Worst Day of My Life by Gregory Brandt. If someone asked you what was the worst day of your life, what would you say? People have told me, Gregory, Mr. G, you've had such a hard life, and uh, I don't know how to respond. I mean, even though I may have had a hard life, it's still my life, and I'm proud of it. I wouldn't change my experience because those experiences, those hard times, is what made me the person I am today. With that being said, there is one particular day that stands out from all the rest. It happened when I was 18. It wasn't the hardest quote-unquote night. That would take place in Hawaii 20 years later. I'll cover that in another story. Today's story takes place in late January, early February 1998. I was 18 years old. I had just gotten into some misdemeanor trouble about a year earlier when I was 17. I got arrested for breaking into a car. The only thing I was guilty of is putting my hand on a car door. I had no adult to, to offend me or tell me what to do, and I should have known better, but Bear County Justice System railroaded me. They took advantage of me. They gave me a totally absurd probation stint with terms impossible to complete. They gave me 600 hours of community service and a $2,000 fine. The community service was performing backbreaking labor in Brackenridge Park. Imagine working 600 hours for free. They took advantage of me. I had a hard time on probation, but when they finally revoked it, it was because I said that I planned to smoke pot when it was over. That was the thing. My probation was never going to end. They were going to find one way or another to lock me up. I told the judge that I had planned to join the military, so he sent me to this corrupt boot camp he was sponsoring called Zero Tolerance. After everything I've been through in my life, my first day at Zero Tolerance boot camp has to be the worst. I was barely 18, convicted of a misdemeanor. Everyone else there was convicted of felonies, some as bad as manslaughter. They make you go to county jail first before they transfer you to the boot camp, which was located in Poteet, Texas, a small town on the outskirts of San Antonio, known more for its strawberry festival than its boot camp. My circumstances were a little different. I had actually volunteered for this boot camp in order to get off probation early. But they said I still had to go to county jail in order to be transferred to the boot camp. The probation officer informed me that I'd be in the safe part of the jail where I would work as a trustee. I didn't want to perform free labor in jail, especially because I didn't need the three-for-one time trustees get because I was due to transfer to boot camp on a particular day. This upset the guard at Bear County Jail, and they moved me, my 18-year-old fresh fish ass, to the most hardcore pod on one of the most notorious jails in the United States. I was on the top floor of Bear County lockup. Look it up. Years later, when I would attend public Ivy League University with some of the richest kids in Texas, or when those weak-ass live streamers tried to harass me and assault my character and reputation, I would think about those two weeks at the top of the jail, and think about those rich kids and how they wouldn't have survived one day. There wasn't even English spoken there. So you could say I was actually looking forward to Zero Tolerance Boot Camp. It couldn't be worse than the top floor of Bear County. But the second you get off the van in Poteet, taking baby steps and shackles because you're chained to another 10 men, there's guards and prisoners screaming and spitting at you as you're walking into the building. The guards, you ask? Yeah, they're yelling at you, but so are the convicted felons. You never know what it's like having a bunch of tatted up felons in orange t-shirts and camo pants yelling and spitting on you. Yes, spitting on you. It was terrifying. They were yelling things about SA, which did happen there. And they were really screaming at us while this was all happening and the new arrivals, including myself, are forced to do push-ups, sit-ups, bodybuilders. So my muscles are jelly. My mind is freaking out. It was my worst nightmare. First thing they did was strip everybody down completely naked, ho looking for lice. They hose you all down, throwing baby powder on you. Then they give other inmates razors to shave the new arrivals. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's give convicted felons razors to shave other convicted felons. I had this one guy shaving my face. I barely had peach fuzz at the time and then this notorious gangster boot willow interrupted us grabbed the razor out of the inmate that was shaving me and boot willow sliced my fucking face right there blood started spurting everywhere and before he could get another swipe on my face a guard came in and stopped it i was brought to the nurse infirmary place where they bandaged me up then they called the head guy the head honcho who ran the whole place he was an ex-nfl player that's probably why he got the job the head guy basically told me not to say anything and i didn't they ended up putting me right back in front of Boot Willow's bunk. So ugly Boot Willow had to look at my pretty face every day. Boot Willow didn't just hate me because I was one of the only Caucasian people. He also hated me because he was covered in acne scars and ugly as fuck. They took everyone's picture on that first day and they compare it to a picture they take on the last day. And there's a big comparison. You wouldn't even recognize me if you ever saw that picture. I had no appetite. I had been sentenced to 60 days at zero tolerance, ZT as they called it. And as I lay in the top bunk at the end of that day, that worst day ever, I looked around the dorm and a couple of the other 
Inmates were winking at me, calling me fresh fish. I didn't think I would be able to survive this place. Early in the day and for the previous few weeks, I had found a way to survive in a hardcore jail. I didn't get any fights and didn't witness any SA. This place was different. We all had to shit, shower, and shave together, all 50 of us. Now, I don't like spending time around groups of men, even if we were a Super Bowl winning football championship team, but these guys were criminals, thieves. I laid there in my bunk on that first night. I wanted to go back to jail. Then it hit me. Why couldn't I? I'm the one that agreed to this boot camp bullshit, so couldn't I just change my mind? Back in county, I didn't even have to leave my cell except for Meals or Dawson's Creek. For some reason, the prisoners were obsessed with that show. I had survived a mini riot during the Super Bowl in county jail. I didn't want to do 60 days in boot camp, so right then and there, I decided to rebel. What were they going to do? Send me to jail? That's where I wanted to go. So I got up from my bunk in the middle of the night, flicked the lights off, and started shouting, screaming, Get me out of here! I'm going back to county! I'm going back to county! There was a two-way mirror where somebody was supposed to be watching us the whole time, but I guess they were on a break because they didn't notice me yelling at first, so I got louder. They were probably figuring out what to do because in the 10 years or so of Zero Tolerance Boot Camp, no one had ever done this before. Finally, I grabbed a plastic chair and started obliterating it in front of the mirror, just banging it on the ground until they did something. A Navy SEAL came out, got me in a headlock, and dragged me into solitary confinement. Now, I was in a jail, in a boot camp, in a jail. They kept me in solitary for three days. I remember a, sp a spider crawling in, and it was just totally crazy those three days. They let me out to use the bathroom. There wasn't a bathroom in there. And I'll continue this story, but for now, that first day of boot camp when I was 18 was the hardest, the worst day of my life. And every time I notice the slash on my face, I'm always reminded about that day. I ended up spending 64 days in the Zero Tolerance Boot Camp, and they ended up closing the place down for widespread corruption. If you want to look into the place yourself, you're more than well. If you want to look up my record, you're more than well. Go ahead and check my receipts. Maybe you can find that elusive picture I'm telling you about. There was a lot of things that went on there that I won't ever forget, and it was a real disturbing place. I remember they did let us watch a movie once a week, and one time they had the movie Rudy play, and the uh, the football guy who ran the place was like, oh, what's, what um, state is the University of Notre Dame is, is in? And nobody knew it but me. And then another time, the uh, football guy told everybody in boot camp, He's like, everybody who's in here today is in here because of the choices that they made in their life. Everybody in this world has to deal with where they're at because of the choices they made in their life. And I always think about that. Think what an ignorant statement that is. Like, what of all the victims of crime that those guys per perpetrated? Are they in the position that they are because of the choices that they made? Anyways, if you want to check out this story more, check out my book, Gonzo Education. I actually don't go into detail in Gonzo Education, but there is a version of this story on YouTube, on my original YouTube channel. Once again, my name is Gregory Brandt, Mr. G. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I uh, hope you enjoy the story. Everybody, um, take care of yourselves. Have fun. Aloha. Shoots.